Atlantis. For many millennia, the legend of this forgotten world has haunted the dreams of mankind. But what of the reality behind all the stories told by philosophers? What if Atlantis was never really a myth? It all began one morning in April 1937. I was on board the celebrated Hindenburg, the biggest airship of the famous Zeppelin line. I was on the way home to the US from a conference in Germany on the future of aeronautics. As I was contemplating from the gondola the vast sea of clouds, I couldn't resist a certain pride since I was one of the engineers who brought this giant of the sky to life. Two days out of port, the Hindenburg slowed to a brusque halt. Crew members announced a technical problem and bustled the passengers into their cabins. I attempted to peer at the motors through the bay windows when a most disagreeable meeting occurred which would make its mark on my whole future. Are you Howard Brooks? Yes. What's the matter? We wanted to know, that's all. Hey, there you are. Oh, don't look like they beat on you too bad. Unlike me, I kind of think I got a broken leg. Yeah, I've seen a few of them in my time. Do you want me to call for help, Mr. Uh... Garetti? Lou Garetti. Nah, don't bother. Anyways, there ain't time for that. You have an important rendezvous, Mr. Brooks. Then you better not be late. How do you know my name? Hey, was it you that... Nah, <laughs> don't worry. It wasn't me who hit you on the head. <laughs> I've been following you since your conference in Germany. My boss figured you was gonna have a bit of trouble, so he had me keep an eye on you. I, uh, had a little word with the guys who was pushing you around. And where are they now? Forget about them. They got away on the emergency biplane. Thing is, though, they sabotaged the Hindenburg. We're stuck here, buddy. Up in the air. Who are these men who attacked me? Pretty tough guys. And uh, I speak from experience. Oh, They're after something valuable you got. Something you inherited from your father. I guess they figured you got it with you. What the heck is this all about? My father's been dead for 20 years. And he didn't leave me any precious object that's worth a lump like this on my head. Maybe you don't even know what it is yet. But let me tell you, these guys know what they're doing. Fortunately, my boss has taken certain precautions. He'll take care of you. Who is your boss? Mr. Foster. A businessman, real big time, you know. He's very keen to meet with you in New York. He knows all about what's going on. He could wise you up about this uh, inheritance stuff. My job's just to see you get there safe and sound in one piece. You say the Hindenburg's been sabotaged? Yeah, 
They obviously wanted to create a diversion, and after I tangled with them, they must have got a bit carried away just trying to gain some time. Where are all the crew? And the passengers? The crew are checking the outer skin and the hydrogen tanks on the upper levels. There could be an explosion. The passengers are being kept in their cabins for safety's sake. I'm sure I could be of some help speeding up the repairs. Well, I guess since you work for the Zeppelin Company, you are part of the team. One of the motors is down. You could try and get it going again. I believe there's a problem with one of the gas pumps. You should take a look behind it. The pressure's really low. There must be a leak somewhere. The radio's badly damaged. Looks like it was done deliberately. The plans of the Hindenburg, the greatest airship the world has ever seen. I'm proud to have been part of its conception. that burns.
I've replaced a defective pipe. The pump should work now. Nice work, Mr. Repairman. Now you just have to get it going. Must be a lever somewhere, huh? The pump has a broken belt. I need something to replace it with. Take my belt! My cousin Gino's a mechanic. I remember he did that once. It's good to hear that motor again. Now I better contact my boss to let him know you're coming and find out where you gotta meet him. And there's a telex machine somewhere on board. Send a message from me and bring me back the reply. Hey, I'd go myself, you know, but <laughs> this leg's out of action. Don't worry, I'll do it. What's the message to be? Um, the package is intact. Please confirm delivery point. Got it. Right then, the package shall see what he can do. Hey, you're pretty good. It's a pleasure to work with you, messed up Brooks. Okay, what does the message say? The boss will meet you at his office in the Empire State Building on the 14th floor. He's gonna ask the captain of the Hindenburg to dock the airship on the Empire State's roof. <laughs> Mr. Foster never does nothing by halves. Ah, looks like we're off. About time. Nice uniform. Thank you, sir. I do take great care of it. My name's Howard Brooks. And you? Elmer, sir. I knew an Elmer once. He was... I'm very sorry, sir, but I'm not allowed to talk to visitors, only to provide information. There are very strict rules. That's all right. I understand. 
I'm sorry, sir, but you can't use the elevators. It's a question of security. But I really have to get to the 14th floor. I I'm very sorry, sir. Under present circumstances, only people wearing a badge may move freely around the building. And the badges can only be obtained at the ground floor reception desk. What's the problem? There's been a technical incident, and the elevators aren't functioning correctly. Access to them is limited during maintenance work. Maybe I could take the stairs? The emergency staircases can only be used in an emergency, sir. I'm afraid you'll just have to be patient. I found this note. It seems to be addressed to you. Ah, thank you, sir. It must have just come in. I do pick up my messages regularly. I hope I haven't brought bad news. You look a bit upset. Um, let's just say that I made a little mistake, and ever since then my superiors are keeping an eye on me. From now on, I intend to follow security procedures to the letter. Sounds to me like a wise decision. Thank you for bringing me this message. Now I have to return to my duties. This notice shows detailed evacuation instructions in case there's a fire. It says you mustn't take the elevators, but you must use the emergency staircases that the bellhops will indicate. Hey, mister, there's a fire! Take the emergency staircase, it's right over there! Whew. The ground floor at last. I feel like I've run a marathon. Jack Murray, journalist. You work here? No, I'm just a visitor. Pity. You could fill me in on what's going on. I've been hanging around here for hours. I always thought Tail and Stars was a more exciting job. Guess I'd rather be back on the news desk before I turn into a potted plant or something. Are you watching out for someone famous? Yep. The paper sent me because I'm their best reporter. One of our biggest stars is right here in the Empire State and I simply have to get an interview. I've got a badge, so I've covered every single floor, but I came up with zilch. So I'm just waiting here. 
She's gotta come down sometime. Say, do you know how I can get a badge so I can get around the building? Go try at reception. But you may be out of luck. The security guys have stopped them from being given out. I only just managed to get mine. I'm trying to get to the 14th floor. Could you possibly help me? I'm afraid you're out of luck, sir. Some floors can't be reached by the elevators due to a technical problem. You'll have to wait for the problem to be resolved. You must see a lot of people come through here. I've heard you sometimes get to see movie stars here in the building. The Empire State Building is a very prestigious place, and it attracts prestigious people. Even as we speak, Greta Garbo is within these very walls to discuss her next film project, Conquest. I'm one of her greatest fans. I haven't seen any of her recent films, but she certainly is a great actress. She was wonderful in Camille. It's a shame she didn't get the Oscar. I have an appointment with a Mr. Foster, an important businessman. Do you know who he might be? Of course. Mr. Foster has had offices here for a long time. He has the whole of the 14th floor. He's a charming man, very refined. I suppose he must be pretty well off. Mr. Foster has one of the largest fortunes in the country. Oh. And what line of work is he in? As far as I understand, Mr. Foster has a very wide range of investments, but he is particularly interested in antiques. I'd like a badge to use the elevators. I'm sorry, sir, but no badges can be given out during a maintenance alert. Please come back later. I'm a big fan of Greta Garbo, too, you know. Did anyone ever tell you you kind of look like her? Oh, now you're flattering me, Mr... Brooks, but you can call me Howard. You know something, Howard? I had the privilege of exchanging a few words with Greta Garbo only last week. It was an unforgettable experience. It's a pity the incompetence of one of the bellhops spoiled it all. What happened? One of the bellhops lost some of her luggage. I just know it was that good-for-nothing Harry Mitchell. I never did like him, and his brother's no better than he is. I'm very sorry, sir, but access to the elevators is restricted to persons who have a badge. Apparently, Greta Garbo is here in the building. You are so lucky. You get to rub shoulders with the stars in your job. We do indeed get to meet famous people, but sometimes that's more trouble than it's worth. These are very demanding people. I heard tell of an incident last week. One of the bellhops didn't do his job too well. I think it was someone called... Uh, Elmer. I see you've heard. My brother Elmer has indeed been somewhat negligent. He's lost some parcels belonging to Miss Garbo. The bellhops are all doing their best to make up for this negligence. Miss Garbo will be down in about an hour and I shall be apologizing again for the incident. I have some information that might interest you. Greta Garbo is going to be coming down to the lobby. No kidding, that interests me. So what can I do for you in return? I need your badge. No problem. I don't need it. Here, take it. Thanks. Miss Garbo will be down in the lobby in an hour. Good luck with the interview. You may use the elevator, sir. Uh, good day to you, sir.
sorry to bother you, but perhaps you could help me? What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to get to the 14th floor for a meeting with Mr. Foster, but I'm having a bit of trouble with the elevators. Well, this is the 18th. There's a slight problem with the elevators right now. Miss Hatchet is taking care of it. Mr. Foster is very understanding. I'm sure he won't mind you being a little late. Who's Miss Hatchet? One of the security directors. Her office is on this floor. Do you know Mr. Foster? Yes, I've spoken to him a few times. He's passionate about ancient art, like me. He's got a wonderful private collection. He's donated a lot of pieces to the Metropolitan Museum, you know. Have you seen him recently? I did see him about two weeks ago. He looked a little preoccupied. He told me he was on the edge of a very important discovery. One that would call into question everything we know about history. But he wouldn't say any more than that. Is Miss Hatchet your supervisor? Yes, and she's not an easy person, I can tell you. She's always interfering, like with the way we dress, how we do our hair. She's real strict about all that, and I just love fashion. She won't let me dress how I like to. Well, I think you look absolutely ravishing. But if you don't mind me saying so, I think you'd look even better if you let your hair down. Loose hair isn't in fashion now. I try to keep up with the times, but it isn't easy with Miss Hatchet. Yes, what is it? Um, do you know how I can get to the 14th floor? That floor isn't accessible at the moment. What is your business there? The 14th is a high security floor. All visits there are monitored. I have an appointment with Mr. Foster. What's so special about the 14th floor? There are many valuable objects there. It's where Mr. Foster stores a part of his art collection. Perhaps I could be of help. I doubt it. Just let us get on with our jobs and everything will be sorted out. I really don't have time for this. Would you please leave my office? I have a very important matter to discuss with Mr. Foster. These elevator problems really are a nuisance. You might at least tell me what's going on. <sighs> Since you are so very insistent, the breakdown might possibly be due to sabotage on the part of some thugs. I'm at present arranging for repairs down in the basement that should allow you to access the 14th floor. Then you'll be able to take care of your business with Mr. Foster. Now, would you please let me get on with my work? If you are one of them pen pushers, you can just push off. Miss Garbo's in a rendezvous, and she don't want to be disturbed. Don't worry, I'm not here to bother her. Are you her bodyguard? Yeah. A thing like Miss Garbo draws the crowd, you know? And there's folks who have a tendency to get a little pushy. Eh, the price of fame. But not all cinema lovers are like that. Take the young lady who works in reception. She's a big Garbo fan, but I'm sure she knows how to behave. You were saying the young lady in the reception? You know her? A little. Why? Well, I gotta say, she did kinda catch my eye. So if she loves the movies, the signed photo of Miss Garbo's gotta make her happy, right? You know her first name? Um, I don't remember it. Ah, too bad. I have to think of something else. What with Miss Garbo here in the office, I've never seen so many visitors. You a journalist? You looking for an interview? No, actually, I have an appointment on the 14th floor. In that case, you're in the wrong place. This is reception for Cineworld magazine. 
I'm real busy. If you wouldn't mind coming back a little later. A friend of mine who works here, Ellen O'Connor, is getting picked on by her supervisor. I hope you don't have that kind of problem. Oh, you know Ellen. Poor thing, they're really strict about her hair and what she wears. And she just loves fashion. It's getting her down a bit. Do you have anything that might cheer her up? Take her a copy of our latest edition. There's a very interesting article about next season's hairstyles. There are some movie stars saying how long hair is coming back into style. You know, like right down over the shoulders? That might give Ellen some ideas. I can't wait to read the exclusive interview Greta Garbo's given us. The movie she's shooting at the moment is an enormous production. It's a historical drama, and Miss Garbo's playing a countess who's in love with Napoleon. Sorry to bother you again, Miss O'Connor. Just take a look at this magazine. The article about the next thing in hairstyles? Seems I was right. Goodness! It does indeed. Well, to hell with Miss Hatchet. Miss O'Connor, you look absolutely stunning. I sure am glad I managed to convince you. Quite the charmer. Thanks for the tip. Maybe I could take you out to dinner once I've taken care of my business here. <gasps> How could I possibly refuse an invitation like that? And from a guy with such nerve. See you soon, then. I have to admit something. I came back down just to see you. I was starting to miss your charming company. Howard, is there something you need? I'd like to know your name. After all, you know mine. It only seems fair. You're right. My name's Julia. Oh, a very pretty name. Who knows? Maybe one day it'll be a famous one in the movies. The staff wishes to apologize for the inconvenience caused by the elevator, sir. Some floors are momentarily inaccessible. You can be sure that maintenance is doing everything possible to remedy the situation. I found out something that might interest you. I know the receptionist's first name. She's called Julia. Hey, thanks for the tip. I figured a little dedication by Miss Garbo should get me noticed by the little lady, huh? Hey, if I can ever return the favor, you know, just let me know. With your job, I suppose you notice a lot of things about the places Miss Garbo visits, don't you? Yeah, I keep my eyes peeled. Slightest hint of danger, and I'm on to it. You haven't noticed anything suspicious here in the Empire State Building, have you? I heard that some bad guys might be trying a bit of sabotage. Hmm. Two hours ago, I accompanied Miss Garbo to the 12th floor. She wants to say hi to a friend. I noticed some suspicious-looking guys hanging around the corridor. Do you know what they were up to? I questioned them, but they weren't very chatty. All I found out is they was waiting for someone called Lansky.
doors locked. What's a pretty girl like you doing sitting all alone in the corridor? You waiting for someone? No, I'm just on my break. I don't feel so stifled here by all those accountancy files. How about you? You look lost. I don't know the Empire State Building very well. But don't worry, I'll find what I'm looking for. Can I get to the 14th floor from here? You can usually, but the maintenance guys are checking the elevator machinery. Afraid you might have to wait. Have you noticed anything unusual on this floor? Well, since this morning, there's been a lot of people coming and going. I've noticed a few people who don't look like they work here. They look a bit, well, dubious. Do you know someone called Lansky? I do, unfortunately. I used to even work for him, but I quit right away when I found out his business wasn't exactly legal. Lansky didn't trust any of his employees. He used to spy on them the whole time. I couldn't stand that. Does this Lansky guy have offices in the Empire State Building? Right here on this floor. The door of his office is right opposite the bulletin board. It says here on this rota that employees must observe office hours from 9 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Doors locked. This here plan shows a series of floors, minus 2, 8, 13, 7, and 14. The boss was right. She found a way to get past us. It was just as well we stopped that broad. Minus 2, 8, 13, 7, and 14. Got it. photo must have been taken at the inauguration of the Empire State Building.
She's not hurt. She's just out for the count. There's a funny smell. It smells like chloroform. I just found a woman unconscious in her office. I think she's been attacked. Quickly, uh, show me which office. My God, Miss Hatchet. Poor Miss Hatchet. I do hope the emergency room will take care of her. She's not always easy to get on with, but I wouldn't wish it on anyone to be attacked like that. I just wonder who could have done such a thing. Thank you. 